much because there's not a lot of people. Oh, there's a lot of cross, cross country <laughs> traffic. Yeah, but that's going to Perth. Well, from Fort Headland to Perth. Yeah, so there's a little bit. You get a couple planes a day. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is what we mostly see up here. These are satellite downlinks. Yeah. Uh, for geo uh, geostationary satellites, for the most part, uh, they're low bandwidth transmission. Uh, this, so this is a redshift. To see if I remember these. Uh, this is a redshift of six and a half. You notice it's perfectly flat. This is a redshift of ten. This is a redshift of thirteen and a half. So we've been looking in that range for the neutral hydrogen blob. Uh, I've got a little. From you can take one of these things and you just. This is the. Uh, just looking over the whole sky with an antenna. Uh, this, this is the galaxy going This is your antenna? Mm -hmm. Cool. Just one antenna. Uh, oh, oh, this isn't a prediction. No, nope, this is the real deal. There's no RFI filtering in this because we didn't need to. Where was this taken? When? Where? Oh, so this is my door. Oh, oh, this is this is on site with our three one. antennas. One antenna. No, so actually, this is one antenna of it because we only wow. have one working at the time. Uh, and so if we go through then and predict and try and say, if we're able to get rid of all the galaxies between us and it and do all this work, it's a hard signal to get out. What is the power spectrum? What are the bumps sort of things that we will see? What is the sensitivity? We get something like this. Just look at the upper one. This is one of the predictions. This is another prediction, another prediction, another prediction. And this is 360 hours or one season's observing at the NWA. We have the sensitivity to do it. The question is getting the systematics, controlling how those antennas operate extraordinarily precisely so that we don't get any contamination. That becomes a huge issue. Right. So uh, let me just I, I sort of, uh, we have now been funded, uh, which is very exciting. Uh, so we will go off and do wide field survey science, the sort of things you can do with this huge field of view. And it's really designed to have very low systematic and So I'm actually just going to finish this. We really are introducing a new, a new golden age of radio astronomy. Golden age of radio astronomy. Digital computers, cheap digital processing are changing the name of the game. Things like imaging a huge field of view could not have been done five years ago. This is what computers are allowing us to do. And we hope to be able to use those techniques to be able to go and see the formation of the first stars and galaxies. And I'm going to a little bit more about where we come from. So I'm just going to leave you with one last picture here, which is at my lure and where we're hoping to go. So yeah. lots of time for questions here. Would it be possible to move the antennas in synchronization with rotation? Yes. So the, the antennas themselves don't move, but we can change this field where where we look, and they move all together. Are yeah. you doing it from my face? But I'm saying actually put them on equatorial type mounts. We could to track. Like you do, like the uh, like the very large array. Yeah, we could. It just it, it all ends up being money. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Are you pointing it, 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 it by examining the phase as it comes in? So actually, the way we point it is uh, the so at each dipole there's a little amplifier which yeah. stuffs the radio signal in a cable TV cable. Of course. And it comes into a box, uh -huh. and on that box are delay lines, sections of wire that go back and forth with mm -hmm. switches that switch in the amount of wire that can be used okay. for each antenna. So what you do is you have, let's imagine, an antenna here and an antenna here. On one if little box are, right now. Right. Uh, on one antenna, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, one, dipoles, I need to be clear. Right. One dipole here and one dipole here. If I have the same amount of electrical cable when I combine the signals, they're looking straight up. Uh -huh. But if I have an object over there, the uh -huh. signal will hit this one uh -huh. before it hits this one. Uh -huh. So if I add a little bit of extra cable on this one by having it go through a little extra wire, when I combine the signals, mm -hmm. they're added up looking in that direction. Uh -huh. So I can sit here in this box with these little switches, switching in the amount of electrical line that's in there. 
and shift where the telescope is looking. Couldn't you do that electronically easy, it, more well, easily? <laughs> it's electronically. It's, um, it's electronic switches. What yeah, but un unplugging wires. No, see, no, see, no. No. Oh, we, we are physically doing it. Yeah, but, you know, it's a little digital system which is sitting there yeah, fiddling but, away. Okay. 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 It's an interferometer yeah. redesigned to do something else. In a way. Well, it's just an interferometer. What's different about this one are two things. Each antenna has a big field of view. Mm -hmm.